been running the marathon and I'm ready to fucking end it. You're, you're ready? You're ready to end the marathon? This really was a... Well, in all fairness... Uh, okay, I mean, I guess it was kind of a marathon. We, we're doing five... Well, I don't know if you're going to mix any of these or whatever. We're doing five separate recordings. I They may... Some of them may get mixed or whatever. But we're doing four albums and a list all in all in one go, which is a lot. We don't normally do this. But luckily, they've also been fairly short. Um, yeah. Little 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 snibbity doos here. Yeah, we've talked about Judas Priest. We've talked about Sonata Arctica. We've talked about Ninja Sex Party. Christopher. Now it's time Christopher. to talk about. Can, can I can I make a prediction, please? Huh. I'm I'm calling it now. Okay. This is yeah. only March that we're doing this, but yeah. I'm calling it now. This next album will not be in your top ten of 2024. You don't think so? I I don't think so. I may be wrong. I think it will be because we're talking about the most attractive vocalist tonight. We're going back to Judas Priest. We're reviewing it again. <laughs> Rob Halford, we're the prettiest, <laughs> the most, the, the hot, the hottest, the hottest vocalist. We need to actually, most. okay, but actually, we need to have a discussion. Yeah, this is very important. The hottest vocalist tonight is it Danny Sexbang or Peak Era Tony Kako? Oh, oh, don't do that to me. Oh my god. Sorry, I'm going to look up. I'm looking up some old pictures of Tony here. Oh my god. He was, like, so goofily cute. He was a pretty man. <laughs> but, like, in such a funny way. In, like, like a funny way. I yeah. loved his, like, stupid cargo pants. Oh my god. And his stupid scarves. He was adorable in just, like, the dumbest way possible. I don't know. That's tough. Between Danny and Tony, that's really, that's, that's really tough. Well, let's talk about the third runner-up, Ariana Grande, Eternal Sunshine. <laughs> okay. Hi, I'm Chris. And I'm Jeff, and welcome to the Sound Judgment Podcast. Where every episode, we'll be discussing all of the important musical topics, from reviews to which member of Motley Crue is the most vile. I'm gonna judge the officials. I'm gonna judge all the judges. It's gonna take you people years to recover from all my opinions. <laughs> So we're going to talk about the other hottest vocals. God, that's really the theme of the night. Is we talked about a lot of really hot singers. <laughs> Holy hell. You know, you know, you don't think about it much when you look at, at Grandpa Halford. But, you know, young Halford in that tight leather wasn't bad. It's not a bad look for him at all. He's not he's not standing with the giants of Tony Kako and 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 for him being the only gay man we're talking about. He's not my type. Um, Go figure. That's just yeah. how luck works, right? Like, he's not really my type, but. Yeah, we're talking about a lot of a uh, lot of uh, pretty hot vocalists here tonight. So yes, I subjected you to Ariana Grande's newest album, Eternal Sunshine. Christopher, I am excited to ask you my typical question. I am assuming you have no history with Ariana Grande, or did you watch what? Or did you watch whatever show she was on? <laughs> No, I don't want to say I watched it, but I I have almost no musical history with Ariana. I don't Grande, even remember and which I'm... show she was on. What what? Um, uh, Victor she was, on, she was on Victorious. I was gonna say she was on two because she was on Victorious, and then it got a spin off with the other girl from the other show when both of their shows collapsed. Um, Sam and Cat. Oh, from um, iCarly. iCarly, yeah. So she's she's deep within the group of people who was probably sexually harassed by Dan Schneider. Uh, in fact, I'm sure she was. There's that video of her putting ketchup on her feet or whatever. My, but otherwise, my history with Ariana Grande was um, one time I went into a Kmart <laughs> and that show was on on the wall of TVs that was in the back. And I thought, this girl's voice is highly annoying. And then I bought Katamari Damacy. <laughs> is that seriously like is that a true story? That's a true like, story. That's your memory? Oh, my that's God. My memory. That's my funny that's the because i didn't I, by that point by that point like because we grew up when we grew up with dan schneider jeff it was all that it was keenan and kel yeah and it was probably the amanda show for you and i no. was like a little bit of drake and john i'm talking about era not things that oh, we yeah, necessarily yeah, watched i mean because remember but, i stopped watching tv very young yeah so like i didn't know most of these i got into like a uh, well not got into the tv would be on while drake and josh was on but like, by the time Josh Peck started getting skinny and people started saying he was the hot one on the show, I was long gone. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So I I never, again, I mean, as you just noticed, I wasn't even sure which show it was she was on. 
these are yeah. not shows I watched. Um, I have seen a little bit of Victorious, but I we're, but we're talking. I've watched it within the past two years. That's my introduction to Victorious is the fact that it was introduced to me recently. So I don't have any like historical connection with these shows. I did not know who Ariana Grande was up until a handful of years ago. My next memory of Ariana Grande is when she licked the donut and everyone got mad. And I was like, she's like 14 or whatever. I don't have a clue what you're talking about. It was, I think it was like not long after her second show ended. She was in like a supermarket or something. And she like grabbed a donut out of one of those things where you can like grab your own dozen. And she like licked the icing off and put it back. Then people made a is that big really fucking a thing? deal out of it. I mean, that's yeah, really she, gross. People, I didn't know this was a thing, people, though. It is really gross, but also I was like, she's like 14 and doesn't know what it's like to be poor. Like, she's fucking probably insane. This isn't the biggest deal yet. Because people were like, oh man, she's really going down the wrong path. She'd lick the donut. <sighs> gotcha. Okay. Yeah, she's right up there with, uh, no, never mind. I'm not going to start throwing names, but, you know, yeah, I get what you mean. Yeah. She's right up there with other child stars who... Who have like have gotten into some silly, serious trouble? Who who did some sillies? Who did some silly? Yeah, let's things. call it that. Let, yeah, let's call it that. Okay, so I had no clue who Ariana Grande was. I, I remember the song "God Is a Woman" being like a thing that exists, but I don't actually think I listened to it when it came out in 2018. And then I remember the song "Thank You Next," which was a a fairly large hit. But again, I I didn't really think a whole lot of it wow i'm just i just want to make a real quick comment um because i don't know a lot about what her like popular songs or best known songs are so i just right now went to her spotify and her like top songs really looks a lot like that thing i sent you of in flames where all of their top songs are from one album but in this case it's all the new albums so that's really weird to me that she doesn't have any well, I th- like top songs from other things currently. So I'm assuming I, it's because everyone's listening to the new album, sure. Yeah. But like, I can't tell you another song right now because all of her songs are from the new album. And I don't know any of the old ones aside from I know the name. Thank you. Next. Yeah. No, I mean, it's 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 fine. You're you're not. I'm not going to tell you to go back and listen to her older albums. I'll just say that. Um, all I know is that she is canonically a Final Fantasy character. <laughs> She's defeated Sephiroth. <laughs> You keep reminding me of these, or no, you, yeah, you keep reminding me of these things that I completely just, like, forgot existed. What, what, <laughs> what the hell? That really was like a, f- you're gonna need to explain that to me again. She is in. Because she's in one of those, a, one of those, one of those She's in, spin-offs. like, a Final Fantasy gotcha game or something Yeah, she's like in that. one of those spinoffs. I just, like, there was a meme that it was, like, characters that have canonically thrown hands with Sephiroth and it's Mario Donald Duck like the yokai watch cat and Ariana Grande <laughs> who has also been in Fortnite <laughs> yeah exactly oh that's <laughs> funny uh, I like that I like that I can right now link you to the Ariana Grande page on the Final Fantasy wiki I I love this so surprisingly that was not actually my real introduction to her uh my real introduction was her 2020 album called Positions. I don't remember who told me to listen to it is the problem. But it was one of the albums that came out while I was like in full quarantine mode, right? Um, Due to various... uh, uh, what do you, what do you want to call it? Due to various exposures, I was in like full not leaving this room quarantine for two weeks here, two weeks there, two weeks here. I spent a total of almost two months in full quarantine during 2020, uh, mostly because for some reason I was deemed essential and I was still working the whole time. So, well, you're essential to us. I was in full quarantine mode uh, around the time the 2020 album Positions came out. And someone recommended I listen to it, and I did, and I almost immediately fell in love because that album is absolutely incredible, with the exception of one song who's featuring, uh, I don't know if he pronounces it T-Y or Ty dollar sign, but he's just absolutely awful. Um, otherwise, it's a fantastic album. I listened to that. I then went back and listened to her previous albums, which I think they just consistently get not as good as you go back. I think her earliest couple albums are just really not 
at all what I... They're, 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 they're definitely just not for me, right? I mean, quite frankly, I'm not exactly the target audience for her in general. But What? You're even, not a 12-year-old girl? But even less so when you go back to her album from 2013... Uh, that uh, no, uh, this isn't this isn't for me. However, starting with 2018's Sweetener, I, I think she's been doing some really, really uh, incredible stuff. So she's known for you know, big voice, right? She she's she's a she's another Mariah Carey, Christina Aguilera type, very acrobatic, very big voice, huge range. Yeah, but what I like about her the most is that it's not all about being big her voice is really impressive and i think she is best whenever she's very toned down and subdued like softer songs that let her still kind of show off without screaming i think are where she is best so we did listen to her newest album eternal sunshine and as i said chris i'm calling it this is um i'm sure not gonna be in your top 10 for the year do, do you have anything you would like to say, though? <laughs> well, or would you like me to begin? I'm going to let you begin. Okay. Go ahead. So I'm going to call this out right now. The intro, it's called intro, parentheses, end of the world. And the track called Saturn Returns Interlude. We're going to pretend those don't exist. Okay. Okay. Sure. We're going to pretend those aren't real. Um, Those don't exist. So, because they were dumb. I mean, intro, end of the world. I, I, I don't know, man. It, like, she's 30 years old, and this sounds like she's, it sounds like she's 18. Like, the, just the way she's singing, it's just, it's just, it's just dumb and tacky. And Saturn Returns, please just stop talking about, I, I don't know, whatever. Some, some things in retrograde were fine. But, but. I think this album actually has a few moments where she genuinely, genuinely, genuinely shines. And also, it lets Mr. Max Martin uh, spew his whatever all over the place, too. Max I don't Martin. Know what that means. You don't, do you know who, I was going to say, do you know who Max Martin is? No. Okay. I don't know what he's spewing either. Max Martin is a Swedish songwriter who has been writing an insane amount of massive hits for people since the 90s. I mean, he's been writing longer, but, like, he wrote songs for Britney Spears and the Backstreet Boys. He's a songwriter. Uh, He wrote songs for Pink and Avril and Katy Perry and Christina Aguilera and uh, The Weeknd and Taylor Swift. He's all over the place. He co-wrote It's My Life by Bon Jovi. Yeah. He's one of those guys. And he has kind of a style that shows through and whether this album was i don't know he's one of the writers and producers i don't know if he's like the primary producer but even if it's not him this album sounds like him like the other people involved were obviously taking notes is he what's kind of giving it that like soul feel um not necessarily he he's fully capable but more specifically what i'm thinking is so there's the song on here called Imperfect for You. Okay. Which first off is a, a one of those like simple puns that makes you think, damn it, why didn't I think of that? Because it's yeah. imperfect for you, but if you say that wrong, it sounds like you're saying I'm perfect for you. And it's a right. very it's very much a song about Clever Girl. Yeah, yeah, it's a very much a clever girl song. And Clever Girl is very much a Max Martin kind of thing. Okay. So whether he wrote, I didn't know if but, when you said that you meant like his style shines through, like when you um listen to fucking Jim Steinman and it all sounds like arena rock from Broadway. Well, kind of, but um, obviously he doesn't do arena rock from Broadway. But but I mean, like maybe he's the soul version for because yeah, I thought kinda. I was picking up a lot of soul vibes from the south. Yeah, there's a lot of R and B, a lot of soul influence yeah. going on here, and that is partially again whether it's actually from him or people just like taking influence. It is very Max Martin esque. Again, he's also not the first person to do that, so other people. But I'm going to refer to him because he's probably the most well known. Right, you don't have to be the first to do a style for it to be your style. So imperfect for you 
does this thing in the chorus where the melody almost sounds like it doesn't make sense at first, right? It's the one that's fucked up, anxious, too much, and then you kind of lose track of what's going on, and then it kind of, the melody kind of skews out of place when she sings up for the line, imperfect for you. But in the words of online music educator Adam Neely, he uses the phrase, repetition legitimizes. Repetition legitimizes. Repetition legitimizes. Repetition legitimizes. It's a weird phrase. It's like when a politician says th- things three times to yes. throw it into your head. Yes. That's kind of exactly what it is. It sounds a little odd, a little lopsided at first, but keep doing it and it's gonna stick. You know you know what, in a weird way, not when I was listening to it, but when you like saying it back, it reminds me of, is when... Um, on like the last two albums when system of a down started getting like kind of like experimental with their choruses. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, honestly, that's actually, that's really not Liar, a bad example. Dinner, killer head to the river. Yeah. You know honestly. Yeah. Kind of. That's actually really not a, that's not really not a bad example of the same kind of mentality. It feels lopsided, but you do it a few times and it's gonna stick. You're gonna remember it. It's gonna make sense. And this is, I, I think, a really, really great example of that. And because Ariana Grande's, uh, do not take this the wrong way. I am not saying her fan base is stupid. That is not at all what I'm trying to say. But you're saying pop fans in general. Are no, stupid. not at all. Not at all. You're saying people in general are stupid. Well, that's well, no. Well, wait. What's the quote? The person is smart, but people are wild, panicky animals. Something like that, right? Yeah. That indep- or not Independence Day. Men in Black quote. No, I'm not saying her fan base is stupid, but as a thing that I frequently say, you know, like, oh, this isn't going to be so, like, you know, talking about Judas Priest. That's Invincible Shield is nobody's Judas Pri- you know, is nobody's first Judas Priest album. You about to say that my first Ariana but, Grande album is nobody's no, first no, no. Ariana Grande this album? Is, this is absolutely going to be a ton of people's first Ariana Grande album. Okay. Like, she's a pop singer. Everything she does is potentially reaching a new audience. So there are people who the song Imperfect For You might be the first time they hear a melody that's intentionally misleading at first, but they do it a few times. And then you go like, oh, 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 oh it makes so much sense. Oh my god, I get it. And it clicks. Whether you realize it or not, that's kind of like scratching a little part of your brain that makes you go, ooh. Ooh, I understand that now. I can sing along to that part now. That didn't make sense the first time I heard it. I understood a difficult music. Kind of. I mean, like, it's not it's not really difficult, but this is what I mean when it has... When I'm not it has... giving a Mr. Bungle, but it's, it's no. maybe Baby's first uh, strange chorus-like it's, phrasing. It's this beautiful line that Max Martin knows how to cross so well, and a lot of professional pop writers know how to cross so well, where... It's not so complicated that it's not enjoyable. It's just off by enough that, again, it scratches this itch in your brain. And that is where I'm saying, like, no, I am not saying her fan base is stupid because they're absolutely not. Her fan base are people who like that part of their brain to be scratched. Whether they realize it or not, that is a huge part of why music like this gets popular it has these little moments that you don't even need to think about how they stand out but they do and that is the max martin sheen that is just spewed all over this um and that's just my perfect example is the track imperfect for you and i'm using that i'm using imperfect for you as as an example because it, it is probably my favorite track on this album other than Maybe the song True Story, which I'm not going to get as super analytical. I don't think True Story really has um, those like beautiful musical moments that are going to scratch an itch. I just think True Story is just like a gorgeous song. I love the uh, harmonized vocals during the chorus that interweave with the main melody line. It's just a beautiful, beautiful song. And this whole album is kind of a a piece about the fact that Ariana Grande is um, recently divorced. She's 30 years old, recently divorced. And this is a song kind of working her way through that, it seems. It's a very, again, it's not as in your face as what she's famous for. Now, mind you, she's always been very good at doing fairly subdued music. But I think this whole album kind of fits that little 
little realm of it's kind of introspective, right? That makes sense because I I kind of went into this expecting the whole thing overall to be a little bit more like loud, boisterous pop music, and there was a lot more R and B and soul, like you said. It's a lot more. It's a lot. It's, it's mostly ballads. Like this is a very chill album for yeah. the most part. Yeah. Because even when they let her wail and fly, the way it's mixed, and this is because it's a pop album, is so I don't want to call it flat because i don't mean flat if you're looking at like an equalizer it's so flat in that they didn't put her voice in your face front and center they're letting her go crazy but it's just part of the whole song right and this is going back to a thing uh you know going back to oh god who said it i'm drawing a blank here and i know i've told this story before but um speaking from a guitar player perspective right you can have a really, really fast, weedly run, whatever. But all that really matters is the note you start on and the note you end on. Everything else is just part of the same phrase. I think it's a Marty Friedman thing. I think it's a thing that Marty Friedman has talked about is where I got this. It's part of the same phrase. So you can kind of let yourself go a little wild. You can kind of push yourself, you know, into weird places musically because in the context of this, like, you know, second and a half long moment it doesn't matter you started where you needed to you ended where you needed to you did a thing that got you there and it's all one and you can kind of do whatever in between and when they let her go loose on this album and do her 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 runs and, and her more fancy things it's just a part of a phrase it's just part of the music. I was just because I didn't know much about her voice, and I didn't know if she was gonna be. She's she's flashy up in that. Shit. Up in this range, a lot more yeah. than I wanted so she, her to be. She and has she's a very really high voice, not. but she does have a, a a fairly high voice, and she does have the ability to you know the whole whistle register kind of thing, right? Like she, yeah, she can wail when she wants to. Because with no disrespect to her voice on this album, if you ever feel the need to want to put a pencil in your ear. If you go back and watch Sam and Cat, you will want to. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I'm sure she's a lovely person. Okay. But well, okay. But like I said, so this album is, at least a lot of it is based on her, her recent divorce, which I am not one. I do not, I do not follow her, her life. Right? Like yeah. I'm not some like crazy. I know she looked fan. a donut. I, I didn't even know that. I don't follow her life. I don't know much about it. I don't know much about anything about her uh, ex-husband other than the fact that he was like a real estate guy or something and they were only married for a few years and they i think for the most part i think she is one who mostly keeps her life you know for someone who's as much of a superstar as she is i think she does try and keep her life as under her private her life under private. Wraps as possible yeah yeah i didn't even know she was married i'm gonna be honest with you uh i might even cut this because i don't want to get into it but like the last thing i heard about ariana grande is is she basically doing blackface yeah, yeah, her her uh, ethnicity has been questioned multiple times. I mean, I remember there were recently. I mean, quite frankly, you actually can't keep this in because because uh, coming up, she's gonna be in the film version of the musical Wicked, and I remember reading a comment on Reddit, uh, a picture of her, and someone said, "Wait a second, Ariana Grande's white." <laughs> she's like Italian or something, isn't I she? I mean, look at her name. She like is yeah, it her yeah, name? Like, is that her well, birth name? But like, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, her 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 name is her name is Ariana Grande. Her name is Ariana. I don't know. A lot of these people her, have fucking her stage name is names. Man. Ariana Grande Butera, I think, is how she pronounces the second okay. part of that name. She, I mean, obviously, she 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 is like mixed ethnicity, but she is she she sure isn't black. Okay, we're all just people, aren't we? People are people. Yeah. So why should it be that you and I should get along so awfully? Why can't we be friends? Why can't we be friends? Why can't we be friends? <laughs> I've seen you standing in the welfare line, something, something, something every time. No, it's I pay my money to the welfare line. I see you standing in it every time. The color of your skin don't matter to me as long as we can live in harmony. Why can't we be friends? Chris, do you have anything to say about Eternal Sunshine? All right, how about this? This was the third best album we listened to. <laughs> This was better than Sonata Arcticus, Clear Cold Beyond. Oh my god, that's actually really You awesome. never thought I'd say that. You never thought I'd say that, did you? <laughs> I did not. Can, that can, wasn't what you expected. However, I'll tell you I, what, can, this was better than I expected. Can I, can I bring up a couple questions I have about the album, though? Yeah, sure. What does the line, say that shit with your chest, mean? 
All right, let me um, <laughs> go back and continue clarifying because I wasn't done yet. Oh, okay, this I'm is so, the sorry. third best. This is the third best album that we listened to, and I did like this better than Clear Cold Beyond. But I also don't know that I'm going to go back and return to this a whole lot because I kind of feel like every song I kind of had the same opinion of, which is this is fine. If someone put this on, I wouldn't be offended, but I'm not going to play it on my own time. And I don't think that the the difference between this and an album, like when we listened to Kesha and when we listened to what was like one of the other pop albums that you sent me? Oh, I don't remember. Dude, you're asking me to remember stuff from, from like years ago. I don't remember. Did we listen to Halsey? Halsey. Is that those ones had songs on it that stood out to me and I kept going back to. And I don't think this one particularly has a standout song that I will go back to. I can understand that. But I, 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 I'm definitely impressed that it's not the lowest rated album that we listened to this time. Because again, we did a, no. we did a, a four album a four album run here. If you set this album and clear cold beyond in front of me right now, I'd probably put this one on. I'll take it. Okay. So Chris, can I, can I bring up a couple questions I have though from this album? Sure. So most importantly, what the hell does the phrase say that shit with your chest mean? I have no idea. Is it like how you, how you're supposed to death grow from your chest? and not? I, your I don't know. That's a line that I genuinely don't know what it's supposed to mean. She wants you to tell her, like this. <laughs> or, I mean, I have to... Say it in your sexy voice. <laughs> Jesus. Or I have I have to call it out. In the, in the title track, the song Eternal Sunshine. <laughs> Hope you feel all right when you're in her. Oh, you divorced him. You don't gotta be I, like that. I don't... I don't know... Unless he cheated. I, I'm not sure... I'm not sure what's going on. I just on. feel incredibly awkward with that line. Like, you know God. what that sounds like? Did, that sounds like you ever walk into a room and two people are fighting and you realize you shouldn't be there. That is absolutely how it feels. It feels like you walked into the middle of an argument. <laughs> That's why it's so <laughs> awkward, actually. That's you just like you just dis, you described <laughs> exactly why I find you, that line so awkward. It sounds like you walked into the kitchen just as someone's like, I wish I never married you. That's the feeling. Oh, oh my god. That's, yes. 100%. And then you gotta go, and then you gotta go back out and like sit in front of the cheese tray and wait for them to come back out and be the host again. And you're just like, all I wanted was a Pepsi, just a Pepsi. Exactly. Yeah, okay, so you do, what you do understand. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh my god. Okay, so, I mean, as I said, my favorite track on here is is Imperfect For You. I do think there's actually a lot of other really, really good tracks. This is an album that I have already been revisiting over and over again. I have listened to this album mostly the whole way through quite a few times now. Um, I honestly, I might give it a few months and give a couple of the songs another another chance because it really wasn't bad. There's going to be some songs. Now, there's some songs that just like, again, I am not the target audience for her, right? I'm five years older than her. Uh, I'm I'm a dude. I'm not in her position. I'm not getting divorced. But this also isn't the like album aimed towards 12-year-old girls that I think you probably thought it was going to be. No. Lyrically it is I don't want to use the word juvenile because that, that's not quite what I'm going for here. In fact, I heard this description used um, for Taylor Swift's lyrics not too long ago, and I'm going to use it in this case too. I don't think the lyrics here are meant to be juvenile. I think the lyrics here are meant to just be relatable, and I think there are a lot of people who probably relate to some of these tracks. I am not one of those people. That, however, is not stopping me from absolutely loving some of these songs. They are they are sweet, they are sensitive, they are sad. I really really love some of this album my biggest complaint like i says i can go back and like look at the cash album we did which was high road or yes the halsey album that we did which is manic and i can look at i can look at the track list and i can say you know this one i remember being really good and i i can remember what this one sounds like the the only thing that i can say about this one is there's nothing i can pick out on my first couple listens Maybe now I'll go back and like have a better idea of what you're talking about with Imperfect for You. But it's not not that it's a bad song. It doesn't stand head and shoulders above the rest in any way. Uh, yeah, I gotcha. 
did uh I'm assuming you did not listen to the version called Slightly Deluxe, did you? I put it on a ch- playlist, but I didn't really um focus in on any of it because it's just like four additional tracks. Yeah, and not it's... that I don't love and a good a fucking acoustic track. Well, it's so the thing is with the Imperfect for You acoustic and the True Story acapella, they're just the same vocal track that's used in the other take. I hate that shit. Um, which I'm not super into. That's not ideal. But again, I actually kind of like they did the acapella true story one because, again, like a big thing for me is how much I love the the vocal harmonies in that. So actually, I'm glad they did it. But it's not what I thought of. Acapella is one thing. I turn. I kind of expect acapella to be just kind of like the music track, you know, not there. When I hear, when I see acoustic, I kind of want like a fresh vocal That's track. kind of I what I was why, hoping but... for too, but it, it's not. But more importantly is... Uh, the other version of Supernatural that's on the slightly deluxe version, I, I want to point out, because it features a guy who I think he pronounces his name Troy Sivan or Sivan. It's T-R-O-Y-E-S-I-V-A-N, who I really don't know much about, but I have to pull this out here because a couple months ago, I happened to have the radio on for some godforsaken reason. <clears throat> I don't listen to the radio because the radio is mostly garbage, but a song came on that I thought was very cute, albeit extremely cheesy. And I wanted to know what it was. And that song was by this Troy fellow. And the song is called Angel Baby. And Christopher, I would like to read to you a couple lines from this song, Angel Baby. I'm going to be honest. I'm a little scared right off the bat with Angel Baby. Are you ready? I guess. You're my angel. Angel Baby, Angel. You're my angel, baby. Baby, you're my angel. Angel, baby. <laughs> Chris, I wish I were fucking kidding. These are actual words in a song. <laughs> this is the chorus. <laughs> you can go right now and you can put that on a Spotify playlist right next to Neil Young. There's Neil Young's back on Spotify. And if you want to just make a great lyrics playlist, you could put that right next to some of the classics. That he wrote, maybe some Tom Waits or something. Yes, what it, it like is, the first album actually has some really nice stuff. It on is it. probably, and I bet that that would go really well with some classic <laughs> singer songwriter, some Bob Dylan. You could put that on there. You could maybe some Warren Zevon. He had some really clever it's stuff. Probably the that would single... go well next to Angel Baby, Baby Angel. It's probably the single worst chorus of a song I've ever heard. No, no, you got it wrong. It's you're my angel, angel, baby, angel, you're my angel, baby, baby, you're my angel, angel, baby. (laughs) And really, doesn't that just work on so many levels? Because sometimes someone is your angel, sometimes they're your baby, your baby can be your angel, your angel can be your baby, they can be your angel, baby. (laughs) And they can be your baby, angel. (gasps) <gasps> that's true oh they could God. be so um, i'm glad i for, i had then forgotten about that song until i recognized the name on the slightly deluxe version of supernatural <laughs> and it came back to me and i just had to share chris i actually oh. really love this album i give it a four out of five that's actually pretty good I, i'm gonna stick with a two but i think that's a lot better than you expected. Me I'm, to I'm, like it. I'm giving it a four out of five, and I actually will not be surprised if after some more time, I, I may bump that up to a, a solid five. Wow. I really, really wow, love this. Wow, a potential perfect. Hey, wait. No, again, okay, I give, don't what, mind. What are your. What? What are, what are your rankings for these four albums, though? Well, in, real quick. Invincible Shield, fantastic. I mean, so out of the four we did, right? These Nuts by Ninja Sex Party. Eternal Sunshine by Ariana Grande, Invincible Shield by Judas Priest. Um, Chris, we just talked about it. I forgot what the other one was. Sonata Arctica. Oh, and and that one by Sonata Arctica, which I already forgot the name of the album. Claire Cole, Claire Cole Beyond. Wait, so Judas Priest was your no, no, second those were, no, no, those weren't in order. I was just listing them. Oh, okay. So out of those okay. four, and we just did this run of Invincible okay. Shield is as of now in the running for album of the year. Fantastic! Like Love that you. album was incredible. Then Eternal Sunshine. Okay. Then These Nuts by Ninja Shex Party. And then an album that I will probably forget exists after a couple more weeks is... Wahoo Into the Blue by Sonata Yeah, I was going to say, is again, the one that you just said, 
is Sonata Arctica's album that is totally not called Dark Empath, even though it's what I keep calling it. Chris, what do you give Eternal Sunshine by Ariana Grande? I think two stars is fair. You don't give it four angels out of babies? Oh, I'm going <laughs> to give it... I'm going to give it an angel out of angel baby. That's halfway <laughs> angel there. Out of angel baby. You know what, Chris? I'll take it. I like when I subject you to stuff like this and then you end up not hating it. It's always a good time. I'm a lot more open than you think. I just don't make the leaf myself that often. No, I know you. I know you are. That's why I make you do it. It's just, it's just always fun. <laughs> it is. Oh, it's a good man. time. All right. I need to go. I need to go like cough up a lung or something. <laughs>